Hi everybody and welcome back to Sew Along with Jan and the March Kimberbell mini quilt. So we're on part three which will be the assembly of our little mini quilt here and we have all the blocks done and I'm just going to show you the little blocks. We have the, the oops, second, let me pull this back a little bit. There we go. Um, here's our little uh, four leaf clover. We got the pot of gold. Lucky. I'm really liking the um, quilting of these. And then the rainbow. Okay. So this one should be pretty quick to put together because <clears throat> there's only four blocks. So that, that'll be good. So we've got our blocks. And then the other things we'll need to put it together here. Let's put these out of the way. We're going to need the binding. Now, this is the binding <clears throat> that I made. I went ahead and made it. Of course, you know, you sew your, your pieces together. And I think it called for three two and a half now i like two and a quarter inch binding so these are two and a quarter and it called for three pieces of a like from a fat quarter so they're you know roughly 22 inches so you needed about one and a half if you're doing if you have yardage one and a half widths of the fabric so there's three little pieces that, and mine are two and a quarter so i already made mine and have it all ironed and ready to go here all right so we'll put that over there we need that and then we're going to need our, we're going to make our little sleeve. And the sleeve is six inches wide and 12 inches long. And then what I did, I already have these pressed, but what I did then is I measured in one half inch on the, on each top edge and made a mark. And then I trimmed from that half inch mark out to the point at the bottom so that the top is going to be like 11 inches and the bottom's 12 inches so that when we go to turn this in and fold it and I just then I went ahead and pressed my little half inch they said half inch um, when I did this the first time they they, they said it's a half inch um, hem so I turned it in a half an inch and another half an inch and then when we flip it over and press it in half like this then the the skinnier parts gonna be underneath and that way when you go to put it together see then you don't have all that bulk there with the seams okay so that's why you trim it off so measure in a half an inch on each side make a mark and then trim it from that half inch mark out to the tip of the bottom so the top will be 11 and the bottom 12 okay so there's our little our little um, sleeve and we're going to need a piece of whoops I can't get a hold of it here we're going to need a piece of heat and bond ultra so when i go ahead and fold this in half when we go to put it on the um the little mini quilt i like to i'm gonna I, i'm gonna fuse this down on the bottom where the fold is and i'll show you that when we get to that but you'll need some heat and bond ultra and i'll show you the package so you know what it looks like so this is the heat and bond this is the red package that says ultra hold and no sew. So we're not going to sew through this. We're just going to use it for bonding and it's a permanent bond. Okay. So we need that. And then we need the background fabric and the background fabric, I believe is 14 by 14. And I matched my sleeve to my background fabric. But the one thing I do do is I put shape flex on the back. And the reason being when you go to stitch in the ditch, um, I think that it this fabric then lays much flatter and it doesn't get puckery looking when you do the stitching in the ditch. So I always put a piece of shape flex on the back of my backing to help that when I go to stitch in the ditch. Okay, so there's our pieces we need. Get these out of the way here. And let's see what we have to do first. I imagine we're going to be, to go to the back here. Um, I think we're going to be, yeah, we're going to do the top two blocks first. We're going to sew those together. And then we're going to sew the two bottom ones together and open the seams up. And then we'll sew the two rows to the bottom. So I think this will be a fast one to sew together. So, okay. So we're going to use a quarter inch seam. So I'm going to go over here on my machine to Q02 which is the piecing stitch on my machine. Some of the machines are on a different tab or they say P next to them and the, the line is kind of scooted to the right. So mine is Q02. 
and I like to use that for piecing because then what I can do is I can go down here to my J foot and it says on the screen J foot I can run my fabric right along this right hand side of the foot. Okay so we're going to go ahead and let's see this one needs to go on top so we're going to put the rainbow on top and then these two were um, four and a half by twelve and a half I believe so they were like the, the full width of the quilt. So we're going to put these two together like this. Make sure we have lucky right side up, right? Get my couple of pins here. And we'll pin this together and we're going to stitch this together with a quarter inch seam. We will then, um, I'm going to go ahead and um, press it after that. This one's a little stiff because it's got all those little satin stitches around the rainbow. Hopefully it'll open up okay when we go to press it. All right. This has been such a fun project. I really like this one. And it and it um it actually was deceivingly it looked like it'd be oh it wouldn't take any time, but man, this little this little block here took a little while <laughs> with all the little applique in it. I really like that pot of gold block though. All right, so we're gonna do our quarter inch seam. <clears throat> I've got my Q02 on. I'm gonna go ahead and tie this off couple stitches in first. I've got just a, a kind of a greenish colored cotton, Pima cotton thread in my needle and bobbin that I'm sewing with. Most of the, these blocks were kind of green, so I figured maybe a green would be a good color to sew it together with. We probably will stitch in the ditch with a monofilament, and I'm not sure yet about the binding. The binding's mostly white, but I like the thread to really match. So we may do monofilament because there's also green in it, of course. All right. So we'll tie this one off at the end and cut. And then I think I'll sew these other two together so I don't have to get up as many times to press. So let's do these two. Get my tail off of here. Do these two. Now this one needs to go, I better look at the picture here. This one needs to go like this. Yeah, so it goes like this. So we're going to put these two together like this. It's good to look at the picture. So yeah, this will be a this will be a really fun little project. I'm anxious to get this one done and see what it looks like. I I hung up my little um, this is about the second or third of, what is it, the fourth, I'm sorry, fourth of February, and I uh, hung up my Valentine's, my little Fe February one the other day, mini quilt in my frame in the living room so I can have my February one. So then we'll be able to hang this one up once we hit March. Now I'm going to try to get the April one done sometime at the end of February because um, it's actually quite Eastery. And Easter's in March this year, so at the end of March. So I figured you might want that one a little earlier. So let's see what we can do. Okay, so let's hopefully I got this right. Let's look at the picture. Yep. So there's that one. So we're, I'm going to go and press these open. So we want the seams pressed open like this so that they lay nice and flat. And on this one, oh my gosh, that's going to be so pretty. I, like, I love the rainbow. And then I will press both of these open, and I'll be right back to finish the last seam. Okay, so I've got those pressed open, and I just press the seams open like that. And just be aware that when you're pressing that there is some, you know, like some vinyls and and some um, embroidery leathers and stuff on here. So be careful and use a pressing cloth if you're pressing on the front at all, okay? And up here, there's not as much, but the mylar can be a problem also if you hit the mylar with the iron. So just be careful when you're pressing now, with any luck at all, this is the same length after it's sewn together that the other two are. So I think we're pretty good here. <laughs> and then this one's going to go at the bottom. So we're going to flip this over and hang and sew these together. So I think this one will be really pretty. Boy, this one was a nice, easy one for sewing. Didn't have too many blocks, did we? And I like to put a pin on both sides of those um, <clears throat> seam allowances, you know, the, that I have open because then it doesn't scoot on me when I'm trying to sew on it or flip over. That's usually what happens to me. All right. 
So then we're going to do the quarter inch piecing stitch. I'm still on Q02. We're going to use this for this one and stitch these together. And then we'll be ready to put it together already. My goodness. This will be a nice fast one. I don't think this one had any other embellishments other than the ones that were on it. So I don't think there's anything we have to do afterwards. I know I have, um, it'd be nice to have several St. Patty's Day things. I don't have too much for St. Patrick's Day. All right. Yeah, but I think Easter, Easter's on like the 30th or the 31st of March this year. So we'll have to have the, Mar the April one will have to be towards the end of March so we can put it up for Easter. Okay, so then I'm going to go press this one again. This one's going to be one of those that you got to be a little careful of so that you don't, um, you don't have a, uh, just be careful with all your leathers and everything down here when you're pressing, use a pressing cloth. And I'm going to go press those seams open and then I'll be right back and we'll start putting this together. All right, I've got them all stitched together and pressed open, and we're ready to put the back on. So this one's, boy, this one's going quick. All right, so I have my back prepared then, of course, with my, my shape flex on the back, and I'm going to turn the back with the nice side down. And I'll go do this on my, um, on my cutting table, but I want to show you how I usually do this. So we're going to slip this in here. I'll pull this back just a little bit. And I'm going to slip this in to my and kind of center it on that backing and then what I like to do is pin baste the little quilt so that when I I need to have something in here to steady it while I'm sewing so I'm just going to go pin baste it with my big safety pins here and I will do that over on my table and come back so I'm just going to put in several you know several pins through my block just to hold it together while I'm and then kind of keep them away from your seams here so that you don't have to take them out you know while you're stitching so I usually kind of stick mine you know up out of the way so they won't I won't have to take them out so I'm going to go do this over on my table and I'm going to put quite a several on each block just be careful don't stick them through your leather down here and try to stay away from your mylar too because it, it'll put a hole in it and then I'm going to, I'll be right back and we'll do the stitching in the ditch. Okay, so I've got my little quilt all pin basted and I have switched over to my monofilament. I like to do the stitching in the ditch with the monofilament so that it doesn't really show. And I'm using um, Mettler Transpill and it's a very good quality um, monofilament. I tried a lot of different ones and this is one the one that has worked the best for me and it works well in the bobbin too. When you're winding your bobbin with the transfill, just remember wind it slowly and also wind it um, just not too much at a time of maybe about a quarter of a bobbin or so because it kind of splies the bobbins if you wind too much. So I usually do about a quarter of a bobbin. So I already had a bobbin wound so it's down here. And I just have a little teeny bit on there, but it'll be enough to do what we need to do. And then the other thing I've noticed um, with the transfill, I usually put everything up on my thread stand up here. Um, <clears throat> but this thread does not like to stand up very well. So on my machine, it does work much better to lay it down on the spool pin with the appropriate cap on the end. So it needs to be a little bigger than the diameter of your spool. So I do have that um, laying down. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and do our stitch in the ditch. And I'm going to move over to Q01, which is the straight stitch in the center needle position, so that I can judge with my J foot where my ditch is going to be. So I like to use the J foot. If there's other feet that you like to use, like an open toe foot or a walking foot, you by all means use that if that works best for you. I like to use these little notches on the J foot to help me get into the correct position and down the ditch. So I am going to be on Q01, which is my straight stitch in the center. I am going to go up to a little longer stitch because right now I'm on 2.5 and I'm going to go up to three just to make it a little bit longer um, when I'm going through quite a few layers here. Okay, so I think I'm going to start, let's see, 
why don't we start in the center one here? We'll go down here. Well, I don't think it matters. Let's just go, we'll just do this one. We'll do between the rainbow and the and the lucky. Okay, so I'm going to drop my needle. I'm going to take a stitch or so in, and then I'm going to tie it off. We're also going to sew around the outside edge when we get done here. I like to um, do that because it just holds everything together for me. Let's get that little tail out of the way. All right, so we're going to stitch down the ditch, and I'm just aiming my little notch right in between the two blocks there. Now, when you get up here, it's going to be a little bit harder, so just take your time because that rainbow had a lot of satin stitches in the seam. So I'm just going slowly through that. And it takes just, you just have to be a little careful. It was a little thick there. All right, so hopefully you can see. I'm going to come a little closer. I need to move the camera because it's a, it's not under my arm right. <laughs> I have like a, like a uh, flexible arm that I put my camera on. And so I have to have it just in the right spot so I can get my hand around it and get into the sewing machine. <laughs> All right, so we're going to go slowly through those little spots. There we go. I think I did pretty well with that. Okay, so then I can speed up a little bit when I get to, to the outside edge here. Oops, second. I'm getting caught on my cabinet here. All right, so then we're going to tie off at the end here. All right. We'll do that one, and then let's see. We'll come down. Let's make sure that everything's sewed okay. It looks good on the back, and you can see that it looks nice and flat back here and doesn't look puckery. So that's one thing I really like about the Shape Flex. It really makes your back look nice. All right, so then I'm going to... Go down here. Oops, let's make sure I didn't unthread my needle. It's very hard to thread the monofilament. And on the Brother and Baby Lock machines, it may or may not, the needle threader may or may not thread it, just so you know. Sometimes mine will. It's kind of stiff, so it I normally have to thread it manually, which is kind of hard because, you know, it's clear. So I, uh, I do pretty well for the most part, but I did uh, have to thread it this morning manually. So we're going to stitch down this stitch between Lucky and the little clover. And then when we get up here to the little pot of gold, there's going to be some more of those satin stitches. So you may have to be a little careful. I'm just lining up my little notch here. There's a lot of bulk there, so just kind of go through it slowly. Okay, and that little bit longer stitch really helps a lot um, because you're usually going through some bulk. All right, so then we're going to tie off at the end like that. All right, and then we just got that one little piece to do. So we'll do that little piece right here. I'm going to start in the center here instead of going, let's see, oops, looks like I need to check my needle again here. That thread is kind of stretchy. It's kind of bouncy. So like when you cut with it, it cuts fine. But I've noticed that it kind of likes to, it kind of likes to bounce, bounce out of the needle. Okay, so I'm going to get right on that little spot where the, where the, all the intersections are. And I'm going to tie off there. And try to stay right in the ditch so it doesn't show. And then I'm going to go out to the outside edge here. One of the first one was the one that had so many blocks in it. We had to do quite a little bit of sewing on the second one, though, too. All right. And then next month has quite a few blocks, too. We'll look at it at the end. All right, so I'm going to cut there. I tied off and cut, and let's take a look at the back and see how we look on the back. That looks nice on the back. Okay, so there is the stitching in the ditch. So now I'm going to go ahead and just go around the outside edge here. And I'll just leave my monofilament in. That's fine. I'm going to put, leave it on the, I think I'll just leave it on the straight stitch. And there's two notches on this J foot. There's one over here on the right, right next to where like the edge of the zigzag stitch, the, the zigzag hole is. 
and then the center one. And I'm going to put the fabric on that right hand one because that'll be about an eighth of an inch. And I just want to I want to make sure that that um, stitching that I'm doing right now is not going to show in my binding. So I just want to oops, I can get that little tail out of there. There we go. Okay, so then I'm just going to stitch around and we're going to do about an eighth of an inch top stitch all the way around here just to keep it all together when we go to do the binding. It's nice to have everything together because if you do binding, I remember doing, I've done binding for many years and I have, sometimes I didn't do this and oh my goodness, I had trouble. Whoops, I kind of overshot that a little bit. Oh well, we'll be fine. I'll just raise my needle and come back over. It'll be fine. Won't show. There we go. Then we'll go along here. I usually try to start in the corner when I do this because <laughs> with the monofilament, you can't really tell where you're stitching. When you come around the other side, it's like, did I already go over that side? All right. I've been cleaning. So last night I was, I came home from work on Saturday night and I was cleaning in my back bedroom. I have three bedrooms in this house and my back bedroom, oops, let's start that again. I'm going to take this pin out. It's wanting to cause it to be a little, won't let me go drive past it. So let's take this pin out. I might need to take, well, this one now, nah, I think I'll take this one out too. I think we'll be okay though. All right, let's try this side again. I, uh, you know, you always have a catch-all room. I'm sure everybody does, right? And uh, my back bedroom is my catch-all room. And the, I keep that door shut because of my cat. And so, you know, out of sight, out of mind. It just really needed to be cleaned. <laughs> so I started working on the closet, and I've gotten the closet done. All right, so I think we have one more side to go here. We have to, have to take this one out, too. So sometimes you just have to clean. My closet was so full. I, I've had m many hobbies through my life. And my first huge hobby was porcelain doll making. And I have made dolls since I was in my 20s. And I still have a lot of stuff left. And it's very, very, very hard to find anything to make dolls with anymore. And so I don't do that very much. I still have a friend that I like to paint with, so I kept all my painting stuff and that kind of thing, but I've slowly gone from an entire one or two rooms in my house with doll stuff to one shelf. So we're slowly <laughs> purging. It's very hard for me to do that. Okay, so now we're all the way around. Let's see if we, looks like it looks, did well on the back. So I think we've got, we're ready to trim. So when I, I'm going to go take all the pins out and we're going to trim um, right up against the edge of the quilt here with, to quit, trim our backing off because they make it just a little bit big just so you have a little wiggle room. And then we're going to be ready to do our binding. So I'll be right back after I do the trimming over at my table and I'll take all the pins out and we'll be ready to put the binding on. Okay, so we're ready for a little binding here. And the first thing I think I'll do is I'm going to go ahead and get my sleeve ready before we put the binding on because you want the raw edge of the sleeve up under the binding. So I'm going to go ahead and we'll, we'll work on this for a, for a minute. I'm going to go ahead and turn this over. Let's see. I want to fold this in half. So I've, I've got my little sleeve. Um, hemmed. So I hemmed it while I while I had the camera off right here. Okay, so I just stitched it down. I already had it folded. So you turn over about a half an inch and a half an inch. And then I'm going to fold it in half the short way then like this. So it's about three inches wide then when it's done. So these raw edges are going to go up into the binding. And then the other thing I've done is on the short side, you can see how it tapers in here. On the short side, I on the back, because this is going to be against the back of the quilt, okay, the short side. I've, I've um, pressed on my piece of heat and bond, because that's what's going to hold everything down. And I'll probably just do that at the end, but I just wanted to get everything set up 
ready to go here. So I'm going to go ahead and fold my little sleeve in half here so that we know where it's going to go on the quilt. And this is not in the instructions. This is something this is something I added because I wanted to hang it in my little in my little frame and I knew if I put a little sleeve on the back I could do that. So, all right, and then we're going to find the center of our little quilt here. Just going to put a pin there too so we can find that. Okay, so we're going to turn it over on the back. And then I'm going to lay again. I put my heat bond down here on the narrower side. You can see the narrower side. And that's going to go against the quilt. And I'm going to lay this down and we're just going to line up the pins. And I'm just going to, and I'll do the, the pressing at the end. So. So when you press the heat and bond the second time, you know, you remove the paper and then press it down. Now, the one thing I did notice since the last video, I kind of looked at it and I was having a little trouble with my heat and bond bonding through this bulky corner. So what I do is I just take a little a needle and thread and I just put a stitch right here on the corner and right here on the corner just to hold that corner down because the heat and bond doesn't seem to want to adhere because of the bulkiness, I think. So I just I just went ahead and pinned or uh, put a little stitch in there with, with needle and thread. All right, so we're going to go ahead and get these pinned down. So we're ready for that. I like to do the, the pressing after I put the binding on in case, I, you know, I get it a little off or something. So then I know it's going to be nice and flat. All right, so there's our little um, sleeve ready to go on the the back here and now we're ready for the binding now depending on the type of binding you like if you like to hand stitch and you want to sew your binding on um, and hand stitch it down you would sew it on the front and flip it to the back and hand stitch it down if you do it like I, I like to do it by machine I am going to sew it on the back so the method that I use for putting it you know putting it on is the same whether you do it on the front or the back but I like to hand I don't like to hand stitch <laughs> And I like to do everything by machine. So we're going to put it on with the machine. Okay, so I like to start on the bottom. This is the bottom here. And I've got my two and a quarter inch binding. And it calls for two and a half. And if that's what you like, go ahead and use two and a half inch binding. And I've also put some white, um, just cotton thread in my, in my needle and bobbin. So we're going to do that. But I think I'm going to switch back over maybe to the monofilament. To put the binding on because I think maybe the white will show because there's quite a little bit of green so I think the white will show so I think I'll go ahead back to mama filament then okay so I've gone back to Q02 because we need a quarter inch seam to put our binding on and this is how I learned to do binding and I've got I'll link this in the video description um, it's a little thing it was a little piece of paper called bind aid and a friend gave it to me many, many years ago. And I really, I learned how to do binding this way. And it really does work well. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead. I want to leave a little and up here. In fact, I'm going to scoop down this way just a little bit further. There we go. This is a pretty small quilt. So we need to have a little bit to work with at the end there. So I'm going to go ahead and move, go down to the edge of my quilt here. Let's go ahead and tie this off. Whoops get my tail out of the way and I'm gonna go ahead and tie this off and we're gonna go down and I just kind of eyeball it you can always measure and put your pin in there I just kind of eyeball it and we're gonna go down to a quarter inch from the edge and then we're gonna tie off so it's about right and you should certainly can put a pin there and measure if you like I'm just kind of lazy and I don't do that okay so we're gonna flip it around here this way we're going to take the binding, second here, and I've got the raw edges even, of course. I'm going to flip this binding upward and make a 45 degree angle right here. Okay? And then I've got my raw edges right here, and they're ready to come straight down against the raw edge of the little quilt. And I am on the back, because I'm going to put this on with the sewing machine, so I'm on the back of the quilt. I'm going to go ahead and get the center, or get the ends lined up, drop my needle. We're going to tie off, and then we're going to start stitching up the other side. So we got one corner done already. 
these little quilts, the little binding goes on pretty quick. And I've talked to a lot of people about, you know, what kind of binding they like. If they like half inch or two and a half inch binding, two and a quarter inch binding. I like my binding to be nice and snug. So I always use two and a quarter, even on the bigger quilts. Because I always feel like the two and a half is a little bit. Now I've got just a little bit of a funny spot here. So let's see if I can get it to line up. Maybe not. We'll just trim. I think I got just a little off when I stitched. So we'll just trim this little a little tail there in my way. Okay, and then we're going to get down here and stop at a quarter of an inch from the edge. So I'm kind of looking at where that is. About right there. Oops, I think I overshot it a little bit. And then we're going to tie off. And this is all written out in that bind aid. So I'll make sure that I give this. So see, see, I'm a little off, so I'm going to have to rip just a little bit. I'm going to take that last stitch out because I got a little too close. And it'll be okay because we're going to we're going to tie off there, so it'll be fine. So I'm just going to flip this back at a 45 degree angle. And inevitably, I have a seam in the corner, <laughs> which I do again. It's the size of this quilt, so. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and lay this flat, and then I'm going to get all my raw edges e even here. Okay, I'm going to get onto the seam here, and then this is going to have that little, you know, that little, um, the little sleeve in here. So we'll be going through a few more layers. So just be careful that you have everything lined up. So make sure I have everything lined up. Looks like it. And then do your quarter inch seam. Oops, here. Got a little bulky edge there because of that. There we go. Just helped it a little bit. Sometimes if you kind of put your finger underneath the 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 um <laughs> the foot, if you have that happen, it just makes it think that it needs to go over the hoot over a bump. So sometimes I do that. Just put my finger just under the edge of the foot, and it just raises it up a little bit. All right. So this is where our little sleeve is. These machines really, really feed well, and it's amazing how much differently these newer machines feed. The older ones were good, but these are so much better. It's amazing, uh, especially with the automatic height adjustment. With that automatic fabric sensor system turned on, you just don't have the problems you used to have with the machine not feeding. All right, so I'm going to try to be a little better about my corner here. I think that'll be better. Oops, one more stitch, I think. And we'll tie off. Especially when I was going to do these, I, I wasn't going to do, like, binding on each one each month. But, you know, they're all a little bit different. And I thought maybe it'd be confusing if you only had one video. So we're going to flip this up at a 45-degree angle. Because, you know, each one of the quilts has blocks that go together just slightly differently. So I thought, well, we'll just do it this way. Then you have a video every month. Oops, I'm not, I think I'm a little off here. So let's flip this back up here. Get it lined up. And put straight down with the raw edges together. But I've done lots and lots of binding over the years, and I learned to do the um, the machine binding just a few years ago. And I really like machine binding because it's so much faster, and I do a fair amount of binding. <laughs> and I, you know, and I don't enjoy hand stitching very much. My friend Judy really likes to hand stitch, so she used to do a lot of my hand stitching for me. <laughs> Because I just didn't enjoy it at all. All right, so we're going down the way here. I think I kind of got my, I wonder if I got one of my, yeah, I guess it's pretty good. I thought maybe my my uh, sleeve was a little off, but I think it's okay. All right, so we're going to go down here. And we're just going to barely go around the corner because we need to do the little flip at the end here.
cut and then we're going to go around the corner should be it should be right it seems like i got my sleeve a little off to one side oh well i thought i had it all set i had it all centered but you know you never know it looks like i am a little off but you know it'll be fine who's going to see it on the back all right so i'm going to go ahead and flip this up and then come straight down oops Sorry, I hit the camera with my elbow. All right. Start in the corner. And then we're just going to barely go around the corner here because we need a little room to flip this over here. All right. So let's tie it off right here, and then we'll have a little room to work. Okay. All right, so now when we do the little flip at the end, this is always the part that gets people mixed up. So I'm going to lay this down. This, this is the end that we just sewed, okay? So I'm going to lay this down kind of like here, and then I'm going to run this one up, and I think I'm going to have to, I'm going to cut this one off just a little bit. This is the one that we started with, so let's cut this off just a little, just to give me a little bit more wiggle room up here. So let's go this way just a little bit. Just a little wiggle room because otherwise I have to do a bunch of unstitching and stuff. So I think that'll work better. There we go. That'll be better. Okay. And then we want these two pieces to overlap by the same width as your binding. So my binding is two and a quarter inches. So I've got my little hem gauge here set at two and a quarter inches. So I'm going to set that there and I'm going to push put that on the end of my binding. And then I'm going to take a pin and I'm going to put it in the back piece of the binding here. And we want them to overlap two and a quarter inches or two and a half if you did two and a half inch binding. Depends on your binding size. Okay, so we're going to put that there and I'm just going to remeasure just to make sure. It's always good to remeasure. Two and a quarter. Yep, that looks good. Okay. So then we're going to take this end and we're going to trim this off where that pin is. Hopefully I don't pull it out so I don't know where it's at. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Then we're going to trim this off. Okay. So now we got our two ends. There's a little bit left and our two and a quarter or two and a half, depending on your binding, um, overlap. Okay, so now this has always been the tricky part for people is to get the little flip in here. So this is in that bind aid and this is how I learned to do it. And there's a really good picture. So I'm going to lay it like this. And this piece here where we started on the la left, I'm going to lay it down at a 45 degree angle over here. Okay, this one that we, that we ended with, I'm going to open it up like that and lay it flat on my, the back of my quilt okay so this is the one that we just finished and and we cut off okay and this is where we started over here so this one's at a 45 degree angle okay and I've got this one laid open so then what I'm going to do with this one is I'm going to grab the end here let me pull it up this way so you can see and I've got my 45 degree angle here I'm going to open this up like this and I'm going to continue in the same direction, and it's going to look like it twists. And it and and when when we get all done, it'll be fine. But do your 45 degree angle, open this up at the end, and continue in the same direction like this. And it's going to look all weird, but it's right. <laughs> okay. And then we're going to take the two corners here, and I'm just going to pin my corners. I always put three pins in, put one in the big corner, one in the, in the two smaller ones here. Oops, I'm stuck here. There we go. Sometimes you got to get them flat, so make sure you get it good and flat when you're doing this. Sometimes this likes to, when, especially when the little quilt's kind of stiff, it's a little hard to get the bottom corner done. There we go. I'll put a pin in there. Okay, and then I'm going to get my marking pen so I can see what I'm doing. 
And I usually just eyeball this. You can certainly turn on your laser light and put it in your center. But I, it doesn't show up very well on the camera. And a lot of people ask me, why don't you use the laser light more often? And I do use it. But when I'm filming, you actually don't see it very well because it's like a camera. You know, on the Luminaire and the Solaris, it's part of the camera feature, the projector. And the problem is it it's like a camera looking at a camera. So it just doesn't show very well. It, it's okay, but sometimes you can't even see it. So I often don't even use it when I'm doing these videos because I just eyeball this. Okay, so I got my little mark there. That's where the corner is underneath so I can see it. And then I'm going to do the same thing over here. I can see this one, but I always mark it just so I have a little darker thing to go to. All right, so now this is the tricky part. You have to kind of fold this so that this lays flat like this. And this is always where I can get a little pucker under here because you got to make sure everything's nice and flat. All right, so let's go ahead and start on this corner here. Oops, I missed. I'm going to go to Q01. I think I was still on my quarter inch piecing stitch. There we go. So I went to Q01 to bring the needle into the center so I, it makes it easier to sew straight. All right, so make sure everything everything's nice and flat under there, and we're going to sew from between those two marks. And if you want to mark it all the way across, do that. You sometimes I have trouble doing that, so I can usually eyeball it pretty well from corner to corner because you don't have to go too far. All right, so there's my corner corner. I'm going to cut off. And it really helps if you can kind of bend the quilt a little bit. These are a little stiff, so sometimes it's a little hard. All right. Okay, so let's get this then. And then you can check it before you before you trim. I always check to make sure that it lays flat. And isn't it funny how you do that little funny little twisty thing and then it all t lays flat? But it does. So just practice and look at the picture on Bind Aid. I'm, I will have the... Um, link to that in the description below this video so you can go look at that and you can download it and it, it was a great little piece of paper and it taught me how to bind and normally you know like they they show you binding on the front because they're assuming you're going to be hand stitching it but more people um, you know so many people have started doing machine stitching for their binding now that um, that's the way I do it. So you put it on the back then. So, it, but you do it the same way. This this part's all the same, whether you put it on the front or the back. So I'm going to put some pins in here along the edge. I like to put some pins in here just to hold everything down because sometimes I'll have just a little bit of fullness. And if I pin it, then it kind of helps that fullness a little bit. There, looks good. But if you get your measurement right at the end, you shouldn't have much fullness in it. You should lay pretty flat. I usually have a little more fullness with these little ones because sometimes I stretch it a little bit while I'm trying to get that kind of stiff, you know, that, that little stiff quilt turned. So, okay, so let's go ahead. I'm going to go back to Q02 and move the needle over to the quarter inch piecing stitch. So I didn't have to move my, I didn't have to change my foot. And I'm going to tie off and then we're going to stitch the last little bit of our binding here. Now I'm going to slowly, slowly go over these magic pins. These are the, my, my super duper duper soft pins. These are called magic pins and they're the patchwork extra fine. And I will also link these in the description in the video below because I these are the most wonderful pins and they're extremely sharp. So I didn't realize how dull standard pins were until I started using these. These are like lancets. So <laughs> you will, I, you, I, I bleed on my quilts and stuff more often now, but they are very sharp pins and they actually go into your quilts and stuff. All right, so I'm going to take these out. And we've got the binding on. And now we're going to get ready to sew it down. 
So what I have to do, so when you put it on with the sewing machine like I do, the next step is to take it to the ironing board and get an, an extremely crisp press on the edge of your binding right here. Okay, so I'm going to press this down so I have a nice crisp edge all the way around. Okay, and then when we go to turn it this way and flip it over, we have this beautiful crisp press back here and then we can hit the edge of the binding on the back. And that's the trick is the press. Because if you don't press this, like, you know, when they tell us um, to, when we're hand stitching it, they tell you not to press it actually on the front, but you do have to on the back because otherwise this area here is not crisp enough and you're, and it's going to, it's going to float back a little bit on you. And then you won't hit the edge of your binding to keep all the stitches hidden. Otherwise they're going to, they're going to show on your, on your back of your quilt, which you don't want. Okay. So I'm going to go press this at my ironing board and then we'll come back and start, um, start putting the binding down from the front. Okay, so we're ready to do our corners first. So I've got my nice crisp press on the back and then I have turned this, turned this around to the front. And what I do is I take those little clover clips, the little clips, and I like to clip on each side of the corner. So that's the only places I clip. I don't clip the whole thing. So I just put eight clips in and I bring the binding around to the stitching line. Okay. And then I clip it there to hold it in place on both sides all the way around. And then I'm going to go ahead to make my corner. I'm just going to run my binding straight up along that line. And I'm going to push my thumb up into the corner and make a 45 degree angle. Okay. Then I'm going to pull it down. I got a little pin here. I'm going to pull it down then on this side to the line on the other side of the quilt. And I'm going to put, take my pin and I'm going to put it right in that little corner junction. And it's just going to hold that beautiful corner in place for me. And I've already done that to my other corner. So you go all the way around and do the same thing on each corner. Okay. And put your clips on and then do the, put the clips on first and then do the corner. And be very careful because I, I usually put the tip out and I have to be careful not to stab myself with the quilt. So, and I've also switched over to my, um, to my monofilament thread again, because I decided I, I think that's going to be the best for the binding because my white's going to show and a green would show. So I think we're going to go with the monofilament. Give me just a moment. I got to go grab my glasses here. The monofilament is clear, so it's going to be a little harder to see, but it does work well if you don't have matching thread for your, for your binding. I usually try to use a cotton thread, but it, it, you know, the monofilament does work well. Now we're going to go to a zigzag and I do my binding with a zigzag. So I'm going to go to the standard number one tab on my machine. And I'm going to go down to, I have my settings on 1-10. You could use 1-9 as well. And I set my 1-10 though to the width I use, which is 2.0 for my zigzag. And my length is 1.4. And that's the settings that I like to use for my binding. I have it saved in the machine so then I don't have to set it up each time on 1-10. Okay, so then what we're going to do is you can see that we're running along the, this is the white line that we stitched our binding on with. So we're going to, oops, I got a little tail sticking out here. I got one th fabric that's very ravelly. Okay, so we're going to start up here a little ways. I'm going to bring my binding up to that line and I'm going to take it and I'm going to put my foot down. And again, that little notch in the center of this J foot is what guides me to know that I'm in the right spot. So I'm going to put that notch right on the edge of my binding and I'm going to drop my needle, oops, hopefully, and I'm going to tie off. So when you're doing the zigzag, the right hand zig is going to be on the binding and the left hand zag is going to be off the binding. And then when you turn it over, you're going to be, um, lined up pretty much on the back 
of your binding. So it, it turns out very nicely. I, I tried to learn to do this with a straight stitch and my straight stitch never looked straight, but for some reason the zigzag works for me, even though I still have to stay straight, but for some reason the zigzag works. So I'm doing, just holding my binding along that stitching line where we stitched it on. And I'm zigzagging the left hand sides off the binding and the right hand side is just on. And that very narrow zigzag seems to work quite well for me. Okay, so I'm going to pull this pin up just a little bit so I won't hit the head. And I'm going to leave that pin in when I go into the corner. Now you also want to pull back a little bit on the corner so that it lines up with your line. And I kind of zigzag into the corner slowly. And just be careful of your pin. But if you take that pin out, it will surely move. Okay, so then I'm going to take my quilt and I'm just going to turn it. And you also notice that my foot is up. I use a little thing called pivot. Let me show you on the screen here. I use my pivot feature a lot. And it's this little icon right here that looks like a foot with a needle through it. If you just turn that on, it just stays on all the time on this machine. And that is so nice because... Um, then you don't have to raise and lower and touch a bunch of buttons up here. Okay, so I'm going to take this other clip off, this other corner, and I'm going to make sure my binding is laying nicely along that line. And I can see that I did well turning the corner because my notch is right on the edge of my binding going this way now. So I think we'll be good. I can just come out of the corner slowly. Okay, and then make sure my binding is laying right along my stitching line. When you use monofilament to put your, mon your binding down, you will see a, a little like the indention of the stitch, but it doesn't really show that much. If you were doing a really dark binding that you didn't have matching thread for, I'd probably tell you to use the smoke colored um, monofilament and Transfill has that also. I usually use the clear, but um, mo seems like most of my stuff's lighter colored. I don't do a lot of really dark bindings, but I do have quite a lot of dark threads. So normally I can use matchy thread for that. Okay, oops. I keep getting this little tail that's in the way here. Here it is. Those clear tails are very hard to find, aren't they? All right, so I'm laying this along my line. And just stitching along the, the edge of the binding. Sounds like my dryer quit too. I, I've been doing laundry, so I need to go take my laundry out of the dryer too. All right. Get this all on here. I'm about ready to take this clip out. I'll go around here. Just hold it down right on the line. So once you get the hang of this, it does take a little practice. I, I have done a lot of binding, and I can actually sew pretty fast now. When I first started doing this, I had to sew very, very slowly. It does help to put my glasses on, I have to say. Pull the pin, and I'm going to push, pull out with my, my fingernail just a little bit to hold that in place. I'm going to go into the corner very slowly when you get to that pin. Okay, and then we're going to swing around the corner here. Now, this is where we want to be careful. See, there's our little our little sleeve. So I'm going to press that down a little bit, but so make sure that you don't have it flipped up. Okay, so I did. See, I'm a little off on my, on my um, notch now. So what I'm going to do, what I need to do, is just slide it over a little bit. So I raise my needle, just slid it over just a little bit, and I'll drop the needle again. And that works usually pretty well. Okay, so I'll take this clip out, and we'll start around this corner. And just be careful when you on this side that you don't, you got, got your little, yep, it's all nice and flat under there. So sometimes I'll put a couple pins under there 
but I don't like to um, press it down until after I've done the binding because sometimes it it I get it a little off. So okay, so we're going around this side. I can sew much faster now. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue around the side here with, well, with the camera off. And then when we get towards the end, I'll turn the camera on to end it. Um, you just go into your corner, leave your pin in, and then continue around the other sides. And then when, when I get towards the end, that way you don't have to sit here and watch me zigzag <laughs> all the way around the little quilt. And then we will, I will be back in a moment and I will fin we will finish it off and put it in the frame. Okay, so I'm ready to come out of the last corner here. I've got it all lined up so I can come out of the corner. Didn't figure you needed to watch me do all of the... So now this, I noticed that I'm a little, little bit close on my, my uh, little pot of gold here. So we're going to kind of go up onto the... the satin stitch a little bit but I think I think it'll be fine with the monofilament and I put a pin here where I started so that I could see where to stop because it's good to stop as close to the very end as possible just because um, you don't sometimes the zigzag will show if you go over it so I try to be very close to the very end you know to where I started so all right so I think we're gonna be fine with a little pot of gold it just right up to the edge of it but it's fine all right so then we're gonna go up here to our pin whoops so let off the gas here there we go I'm gonna tie off right there at my pin and we made it around oh my gosh that's so cute I love that little that little plaid binding don't you because I think they called for that plaid binding. I didn't have all the other exact fabrics, but I had a lot of them that were close. And so I just used what I had in my stash. Again, just be careful that you, um, that you, when you are going around, you know, doing the zigzagging, that you have this nice and flat. And you could put a pin back here. I just don't like to iron it down until I have the binding on so that I know I can have it laying flat. So that's the next step. I'm going to go press... My, I'm going to take my paper off my heat and bond, okay? And then I'm also going to take just a little thread, and I'm just going to take a stitch in this corner right here and right here so that it won't it won't flip up on the end. I noticed that on the first one I could not get um, this, this the, the little heat and bond didn't like that heavier spot. So I just put the heat and bond in here, and then I just put a stitch on each corner, and that seemed to work very well. And I'll come back, and I'll have it put in the frame for you so you can see what it looks like. Okay, so there's our March mini quilt. Isn't it adorable? I love that. The um, I really like the quilting in this one because it had some real interesting... Um, elements and it had like the little rainbow and the stars and everything. I just really like that. So thank you so much for joining me for the March Kimberbell mini quilt. And we will be doing um, very soon, I'll probably try to do it, um, do the uh, April one before the first of March because it's Eastery. So I was going to show you the picture. So it's kind of Eastery. So since Easter is in March this year, we'll want to have this one up at least part of March. Um, so I'll try to get that done uh, fairly soon. And thank you so much for joining me for the March mini quilt. And if you like the video, please give me a thumbs up. And also, if you haven't already subscribed to my YouTube channel, I'd really appreciate you subscribing. So thank you, everybody, and have a great day.